it really challenging. Peter White is from Finance Brokers Australia. Hi, Peter. Good morning, Rick. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. Um, what's happening with bank loans? Has the bar got too high for most people to build now? I'm, I'm hoping it hasn't gotten too high for um, people to build, but there are certainly some inherent challenges that are happening at the moment with uh, people looking to build. And uh, some of that revolves around what the impact of the uh, increased inflation that we've had in Australia on the actual prices for materials and also pricing for labour. And uh, I've personally been through it myself just recently and uh, wound up having to uh, you know, pull out of a building contract because it just became too ridiculously expensive. So... There's some, certainly some interesting challenges because that then plays back into the lending scenarios, which you can and can't do. Because that it has got harder to get hands on to money. Melissa Adler joins us now, who's Executive Director uh, of IR and Legal at the Housing Industry Association of Australia, who works with builders. Hi, Melissa. Good morning. Morning. Um, what are your concerns about what's happening to builders? Well, what we often see, particularly with the progress payment schedules under building contracts, is that a homeowner and a builder will agree to a certain payment plan. Um, the homeowner goes to the bank to seek finance for the build and the bank rejects the pre-agreed progress payment schedule. Um, so not only does that delay and hold up the project, but then the homeowner and the builder need to go back to the drawing board and decide whether or not they can make it work with what the bank's requiring. Peter, is this something you're noticing that you're having to do for cl clients? Just have a certain process they need to, to go through. The builders have certain obligations they need to meet, which is why they need the progress payments. And it's not like these things are new. This has been around for, for many decades. Mm. They, they need to sit down and get a greater alignment to make sure that it works for everyone. So that's the, the, the borrower, the lender and the builder. These things need to come together to make sense, to enable everybody to be able to step forward. Otherwise, this imbalance or this piece being out of sync uh, just means that things fall apart. And that's just crazy. And that seems to be happening at the moment. And I mean, on the mainland, we're seeing people, thousands of homes not being built because of large builders going broke. Melissa, I, I, I don't know, uh, what's going to get things in sync? Well, isn't that the, isn't that the million dollar question? Um, That's why I get paid a million dollars. <laughs> no, I don't. I definitely don't. Oh my goodness. Yes, Melissa. Um, and, 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 you know, it's, it's certainly not a new issue, but it's certainly being highlighted at the moment. Um, and, you know, from our perspective, we, we do need the banks to come to the table and, and be open to builders um, maybe using a payment plan that's not something they've used before or is a little different to how they might have structured things in the past um, to make sure that the builders um, can fund the job, the homeowners can get the finance and then the project can progress um, in a sensible way. Are you seeing a lot of builders go out of business, Melissa? Uh, all, what we see is, is you know, what everybody's seeing in the media um, and it's just a very, very unfortunate situation at the moment. Peter, if you're looking to borrow to uh, build or even buy at the moment, um, again, this is financial information. It's not advice. Get advice from your own qualified financial advisors. Uh, I mean, is it is it a time where it's better to wait and hold off to see what happens? Is it one of those periods of history? Uh, or what are the key things you should really be keeping in mind? Yeah, I think that, that's difficult. I think that one of the challenges in, in real estate, regardless of your building or, or just buying something existing, is the longer you wait, the further it tends to want to get away from you. So I always sort of, if you're in the position to do something, probably now is a good time to do it. Um, but interest rates, you know, as we go into next year, may pull back a bit. So it is a bit of a, a hump at the moment, but I think it is hopefully staying to plateau with the pause from the Reserve Bank uh, yesterday. Mm. Um, but um, it, it is certainly harder. And uh, one of the key things is that um, the more equity you have, uh, so the more cash you have to put towards to what your, your project is or the more equity another property you have, the better you'll be to try and get a loan because... With the rise in interest rates and what they call the servicing buffer margins that go on top of that, so the, the, the incremental pieces, so you, you might be borrowing at 6%, but we're going to assess your serviceability at 9%. Um, 
it makes it really difficult to borrow the sort of money you may need. So you may need to borrow less. That then impacts your equity position. Uh, it impacts what you can do from your construction point of view. Uh, the recent experience that I personally had was where um, the cost to build was about a hundred to a hundred around one hundred and fifty thousand dollars above what it was being valued at. And so basically the market was saying, it's only worth this, but you're getting charged this excess because of inflation. It's not that anyone's getting ripped off. It's just that the prices of everything have gone up. I know in glass on mainland, it's gone up about 70%. Melissa, this raises the issue that we're reading about in the age today on the front page, the state government considering allowing builders to use cost escalation clauses. What does that mean? And is that happening in Tasmania? Well, what that means is that there's a, a provision in your in a fixed price building contract that allows for the builder to increase or decrease cost um, depending on the situation and depending on satisfying a range of criteria. Um, obviously, um, you know there's a process um, that's built into those clauses, um, and often there's an option for the homeowner to say, "No, look, I can't afford that. I, I don't want to move forward with that um, price increase." Um, in Tasmania, my understanding is that they are they, they can be included in fixed price residential building contracts at the moment. Um, historically, they haven't uh, because they can be quite complex to administer. Uh, and Peter, is that something that could have made a difference for your build? Do you think you could have nutted something out? Uh, no, the gap was too big from our point yeah. of view. Um, so we just we had to um, basically decline from the contract because mm. the the valuation coming in so low then impacted the amount you could borrow, and therefore the gap widened. Um, so you know, that's all well and good, but that's outside of what we can do. So. Uh, it's certainly it, it, different, it isn't it, from just a few years ago where basically it felt like money was free and you could mm. do no wrong. Um, it's such a different way to think about things. Yeah, and maybe that, that's a part of the problem, that, that it was too cheap, too easy, if I could put it that way, because it was more affordable because mm. of low interest rates, that we got into a false sense of security. Now, I've been in this industry 45 years, and I still fell into the trap. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, so it's just things you've, you've just got to watch. It. It's 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 a very unusual point in time. I think that's the other thing to remember is, in all my decades of being in this industry, we've never been in this situation of such low interest rates for such a low period of time. Mm. And there's many borrowers who have never been through an interest rate rise because they've been in the last 11 years of where rates have just come back and back and back. So we fall into like maybe a bit of a comfort zone and uh, but we've got to readjust to the realities of what's going forward and everybody's trying to do that so whether it be the builders mm. the banks um, but there just needs in my mind to be a more collaborative approach to this um, I noticed from what we were doing the banks are very dogmatic about these are the progress payments and we're not changing so, well, yeah maybe that's not the right approach Melissa would you say much the same 28 past seven. Absolutely, yeah. I think, um, as as we've been saying, the banks need to need to come to the party, um, have discussions, and be more open minded to what what the industry and homeowners need right now. Does the industry maybe need to be more responsible as well? CJ just says, I mean, I'm seeing these fleets of late model cars, flashy offices, TV advertising. Is there a mismanagement issue because those builders aren't used to managing times like this? Well, there is certainly a range of challenges the industry is facing at the moment. We've been talking about the price increases, we've got material delays, labour shortages, um, and certainly there is a role for the industry to play in adjusting um, to make sure that those factors don't adversely affect their, their builds and their, and their clients. Peter White, Finance Brokers of Australia, Melissa Adler, Executive Director of IR and Legal at Housing Industry Association of Australia. Thanks for talking with us this morning. Good Thanks, to talk Rick. to you. Got the million dollar question, didn't quite get the million dollar answer, but maybe one step closer. I hope that information is helpful for you at home at half past seven. Uh, builders.